You're going to say it by faith. All I did was say it by faith. I believe what he told me. Do you believe what he tells you? And when you believe it, if you'll speak it, you'll see it come to pass. God is a God that speaks life and by God and faith. He's a faith God. That's why he don't talk a lot like me. Because everything that he says comes to pass. So I don't know if y'all remember. I don't know if it, it don't matter, but I remember because it, it meant just as much to me as it did to you all. Amen. You may not think that sometimes. I don't know what you think, but I'll tell you this. You have no idea how much it means to me. <coughs> it means as much to me if it was my own family, if it was my own sister, my own brother. That's how much it meant to me. And God said, tell them to get the room ready. I said, God, I've been told this woman for five years she's going to have a baby. And you want me to get up there and preach now? She's already mad enough at me, like to smack me. I'm saying, I mean, I mean, I can understand, man. If she's that does her, her heart's like, come on, somebody, can I preach? That's her heart's desire. He said, get up and preach. So I said, get the. I said, go get the room ready. Remember that? I said, go paint it. Go bring in the baby stuff. I said, it's coming. It's on the way. It's coming. It's on the way. Now I know this baby, not as Ivy. I know this baby is something else. Over what, five, six years ago, I know this baby is another. They named it obvious fine, but I know this baby is another name. I know this baby's name is Charity Miracle. Because I told her, she remembered. When I called her up, my wife said, well, you never said nothing. You never said what sex it was. I said, yeah, I did. I said, I'm going to call her. I said, I remember what I told her. She'll remember. She says, oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> means a lot. I'm not getting up here putting on the ritz. This is, hey, buddy, when you tell somebody something, buddy, you better know it's God. Amen. You better make sure that it's God. You better have spent as much time on your knees for hours before you prophesy ever for two or three minutes. Fifteen hours on your knees for you prophesy two or three minutes. It takes a lot. I'm, I love you, honey. I'm not mad at you. You're just keeping me right. I'm not in trouble. You better pray for me. I'm talking about faith. Hey, I'm talking about faith instead of that talking about faith. But what happens when we don't have faith, as I've told you, we're hesitant because you sing, I'm getting to it, and then we'll remain in the same state. In other words, and I talk about this all the time, and I like what Josh says, and he, he's talked about it many times, when, and, and, and other people also said, if I can just get through the door. How many remember that being said? If I can just get through that door. Why? Because this is where God, this is where the King, this is where angels, this is where the anointing is. This is where God comes to meet with us and we come, come on, and we come to meet with God and, when, and we see miracles. Even I don't care that we're little. Who cares? God said it was out of, He came out of little things. He came out of Judea, Bethlehem, Euphrata. He said, hey, that's what He came out of. Help me, Lord. He came out of Bethlehem, Euphrata. He said, there'll be little among the fowls. I don't care about big. I care about God. Amen. And as long as God is here and He's moving, that's all I care about. That's all. I, I mean, I want our church to grow, and we have grown. Amen. But it's all about faith. But I tell people, I don't want anybody to come into church in the same way and leave the same. I want them to be changed. In other words, faith is what's going to do it. Not going to be doubt. Not going to be dead religion, philosophical, humanistic. It's going to be God's spirit that's going to do it. Not by power, God said, nor by might. So that will cause you to remain in the same state that you're in when you come in here. You come in sick, you leave sick. You come in depressed, you leave depressed. You come in broke, you leave broke. That's doubt. That's the devil. Remember years ago I preached a message, remember the devil goes to church. Y'all remember that message? A long time I said, the devil goes to church. Not in this church, we kick him out. He shows his head, we cast him out. I, I told that story so many times about that woman. I was sitting over, I watched it for 15 minutes, so y'all started shaking her. I thought you all going to rip her body off. <laughs> you having her here? I've done the same. Remember? We, we want to shake that woman a lot. I've done, we want to grab her and shake her. But it's that devil on the side of her. I remember one time my pastor taught me when I was real young. I grabbed this guy and I, he thought I was going to break his back. Man, the guy was strong as nine men. And six of us tackled him in a prayer meeting. It's when I first started. First time I've ever seen a demon-possessed person. Ever, ever since then, the devil, he's defeated. And you all grabbed that woman, remember? And you all prayed over her. And God touched that woman and helped her. Here's the key. When you get born again and, and you get touched by God, then please don't turn around 
and go back out and, and, and turn your back on God and then you come back in worse than you were when you started. We've seen that also. That's doubt. Why do you doubt, God says? Well, almost done. You not only remain in the same state, but you remain in the same place. You don't move out of that place. You don't go forward. You're standing still. I said you don't go forward in doubt. You're standing still. I'm under the anointing. I tell us about Ken. I'm under the anointing. Ken came in here one day and he said, Preacher said, I lost my job. First word I'm at, don't matter. I said, got to get you a better one. First thing I said to him, got to get you a better job. I didn't know God was going to do this. I didn't know he was going to use me. I didn't know he was going to use what I do. But I got to looking one day, and I know this was God. And <coughs> matter of fact, it was the next week. And I got to looking about this place, and God knows everything. I don't. He does. And, and, the, and the company's name was Hubble, which gave the devil trouble. I like that. Hubble gave the devil trouble. So Hubble is an incredible place to work. And then I was telling him about Hubble. He said, well, that'd be great, preacher. He said, I can walk to Hubble from my house. It's five minutes from my house. So I got an application. You know, uh, made it made a little. Uh, we we just did some things to help him. Got the application. Now he's making about six, seven more dollars an hour, working for Hubble. Praise God. But the first words out of my mouth, and the first words out of all of our mouth, said, "What's that to God?" See, I've lost my job too, and some of you have. It's not easy. We, I tell him, Josh, men got pride. We're all human. We got to repent. We got pride. Men want to work. You know. You know, men, men want to men want to to do what God's put. You know that we're, men were, were were created to work. Women really were created more to be the nurturing type. Men were supposed to, you know. But praise God for my wife. Thank you, daughter. Anyway, but men, but men, but men, you know. But I'm same. I'm same way. But my point is, is even in the midst of our, our of our hardest battles, we still believe God. We still pray. And if we were, if we got discouraged, we got a hold of somebody that would encourage us. Amen. So, tonight, and this is the last thing I want to, I want to share with you. And I don't really know how to describe this, but in, in, in that room, I saw something, and, and I, I'm just, I'll give an account before God now. I'm, I'll give an account before Almighty God, but I'm going to tell you. It was, I, it was doubt. I saw it. He let me see it. And I don't know how else to describe it. I'll try to describe it. It wasn't anything like I thought it was going to be. I've never seen anything like this, but it looked... Like, you ever seen soot, that real black, dark soot? It was like soot. It was just black and gooey. I'm serious, what I saw. And, and, and I saw it, he was, I guess it was the Lord, all I know is there was a man, and he was sweeping this stuff down this big, I don't know what it was. I've never seen it, it just straight down this big, Looked like a, not, it wasn't a vacuum, it wasn't a, a tunnel, but it was just a big old uh, silverish looking thing that went straight down. And God was saying, that's doubt. And I said, that's doubt. But it, you know what? has to come from hell because of its, it was just as black as any black I've ever seen. almost looked like oil, except it was alive. It had a texture of that kind of black. Best I can describe it. That's all I can do. That's all I can't to add to it. Take away. That's what I saw. And it was being swept away. And God said tonight, what He was going to do, stand your feet. He said tonight that He, after I preach this word, He said, I will supernaturally remove doubt. He's going to supernaturally remove doubt. We've all had doubt. Maybe somebody in here tonight, I, this has really spoke to you. If it's it's, if it's just one of you, it's worth it all. But it's, it's spoken to us tonight. Now, God's going to do this tonight. And I believe He'll do it. I believe it by faith. But here is the way for you and I in this human realm to keep doubt out of our life. I already told you, stay in the Word. I didn't mention all of them. Walk in the Spirit. Here's a great one. Remember your past victories. 
Amen. Remember where God has always, it looked like the devil had you, and God come through, didn't he? Amen. Brought you out of that. Oh, and I know it. We've been in that place of weeping, of sorrow, of misery, but somewhere later on in the midst of it, God, because he loved us so much, come on, he brought us out. And then again, the last one is our confession. As a man thinketh in his heart, as he believeth in his heart, his mouth will speak. Confess what God says, not what the television says or the world says or the bad report says, but faith, confession, our confession. Remember the confession of the believer. Amen. Father, tonight, by faith, raise your hands. Yes, Lord, I'm going to obey God. Raise your hands up. God, tonight, I want to thank you first of all, Father, for this wonderful church, God. Lord, these are believers, God, but you're speaking to us tonight. You're revealing to us tonight, God, the greatest enemy. God. Uh, uh, uh. Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee, zip code 37742. Emails may be addressed to nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. Pastor Marcus Severance and the congregation invite you to join with us Sundays at 10 a.m. for teaching, followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We're located on Highway 411 in Greenback, Tennessee, just three buildings down from the intersection of Highway 95. If you can't meet with us in person, please join us again next time for our broadcast.